Oh, hey, hon. Come, let's have a little chit chit chat chat. So I want to talk to you about how with international adoption, there's this myth that we can raise transracial adoptees with a colorblind mindset and how color doesn't matter because love. So, um, that's a lie. I'm going to tell you why that isn't feasible and why that's kind of harmful. Before forming any opinions or saying that's racist to me for saying color doesn't matter is a lie, please just hear me out. Pinky promise. Thank you. Okay, so although in theory, I think it's very sweet that color doesn't matter, that you're my child, we're the same, blah blah blah, honestly, I like the idea of it, I think it's a very sweet concept, but oftentimes with transracial and transnational adoption, I find that it's taken to the point of refusing to see color. By refusing to see color, you're denying the entirety of the situation. Although you may be in a position where you can live in a colorblind mindset and not have to deal with race, it's important to understand that we don't live in a colorblind society. We don't live in a post-racial era. And your adopted child may not have that same luxury. They may still potentially be seen as a person of color and have to navigate the concept of race and racism. I understand that adoptive parents may feel like by not talking about the differences in race and ethnicity, they are being kind because then they're not making the child feel different than the rest of the family. To be honest, I think adoptive parents have a very difficult job. Actually, follow me. I want to give you a visual. Come on. Ideally, you don't want to ostracize them by pointing out that they are different, while at the same time acknowledging difference so you can be there for them in case they want to confide in you about feeling different or confide in you about experiencing racism. So take a look at this. So as a parent, you're on the spectrum of trying to be not too intrusive, but at the same time being able to talk about it, where you are pretty much this line walking between the two sections and trying to navigate what is too far, what is not enough. And honestly, as an adoptive parent, that is difficult, but it is an important line. As a transracial, transnational adoptee, I think it's important that people understand choosing not to see color and to have a colorblind mindset protects you as the parent from not having to deal with the uncomfortableness of race and racism, but it doesn't protect the child from having to deal with the uncomfortableness of race and racism. But choosing colorblindness doesn't make the situation go away. It doesn't solve the problem. If anything, growing up in that kind of environment sometimes creates an unspoken rule of, oh, this is something that we don't talk about. So you as a parent aren't preparing and teaching the child how to deal with the situation of racism to the fullest. And that can be kind of hard for the child because now they have to learn how to deal with it alone. The reason why I say it isn't feasible to raise a transracial adoptee in a colorblind mindset to the fullest is because the adoptee might be put into positions where they are reminded that they are a different race than their adopted parents. Personally for me, I think COVID is a really good subtle example of this. So when COVID first started, there were a lot of hate crimes directed at Asians and Asian Americans. And I was noticing more people avoiding me on public transit and more microaggressions directed at me. So I became very aware of my Chinese features. I remember trying to call my mom and talk to her about the anxiety I was feeling with the rise of COVID and my position as a Chinese American. She did her best to try to understand how I was feeling, but our conversation hit a point of her being uncomfortable because she couldn't do anything about the situation or change it, and we hit a point where we couldn't talk about the subject without it being a problem. Although she felt bad about the situation, I realized that she was not facing it in the same way I was. I don't think she was ever truly able to understand exactly what I was experiencing. I wish that we could talk about race and racism without it being an issue. I'm not mad at her because I understand it's also a very difficult situation for her. You never want to see someone that you love or care about hurt her in that kind of situation, but I don't think turning away helps. I feel choosing not to deal with race and racism, choosing not to see the reality of the situation is like turning away. Although you can't fight their battles, you can at least stand with them and support them. What do you think? But also, are you okay? You, you look a little uncomfortable. Do you want a, um, panda bear? Here, follow me, I'll get you a panda bear. His name is Noodles. Here you go, here's your panda bear. The reason why I say color doesn't matter is a lie is because sadly we don't live in a society yet where transracial adoptees, or in general most people, can go about their life without having experiences that are related to race or ethnicity. It matters because people are affected by it and I feel to deny it is to deny lived experiences. I understand that with that mindset, you're usually coming from a good place, and hopefully you're coming from a position where you're trying to be equal and fair to everyone no matter what their race or ethnicity is. 
But I do think it's important to understand that within the current social construct that we are in, that method isn't always as productive as we may like to believe it to be. The conversation of race and racism is difficult and we're all still learning. Although you may think not talking about race and racism is in the adoptee's best interest, as an adoptee, I think you should know that whether you are there or not, dealing with race and racism may still be a part of the adoptee's narrative. And that is why I think choosing not to see color and having a colorblind mindset is harmful because in doing so, you're not helping your child learn and navigate the situation of race and racism. You're not putting yourself in a position to help support them through this difficult journey. Thank you so much for stopping by and having this conversation. Bye, hun!